Hello friends, many candidates approach the interview round with a great deal of excitement and a bit of apprehension. Why? Because they are going to have altogether a different experience where their total personality will before the interview board and not only the knowledge but now the emotional side of their personality they will be communicating through. In this talk we are going to talk about what are non-verbal communication, what is the emotional side of the personality and how the emotional intelligence makes a great deal of impact on the impression that you are trying to create. Another aspect that we are going to talk about is that how we conduct ourselves before the interview board that is entering the interview hall and the sitting there, your eye contact, your hand movements and answering the questions and how to listen to the questions and how to give a crisp, confident and appropriate answer. So let's start. You know, we communicate through our non-verbal communication those things as well which we cannot or will not say in words. So, even if you are trying to say something but your non-verbal communication is giving some other things, then the board will think that you are not being sincere. I will give you an example. In recent times, if you have watched the televised debates of the US presidential candidates, you might have noticed that the moment the debates are over and the drawing rooms of the American houses, people start watching the television where the body language experts start analyzing threadbare the way the US candidates that talked and what were their nonverbal cues. So it gives a lot of ideas that the, how that person was sincere or not in his communication, in his commitments. So that is why it's very important that if you try to put up a front before the interview board, the interview board will detect those things and probably the things will not go in your favor. I will give you an example, very interesting analogy from, our, from India. Toddler Lord Krishna, when his mother asks him that have you stolen butter, have you eaten butter and toddler Lord Krishna says that no mom, I have not stolen, I have not eaten butter but the butter is all over his face. So it's it's very dramatic uh, analogy but you can understand that how your nonverbal cues and the words that you speak must be in complete sync second important aspect is that how nonverbal communication is important how much it is important and how it is expressed albert meravian uh, university of california psychologist he after a lot of study, he came out with a rule and that is still holds and all over the world with a great deal of respect this study is cited called 7-38-55. It says that 7% of your communication happens through your words, 38% through the vocal qualities that is emotion, pace, volume in your voice and 55% through your non-verbal communication. Although in the different situations, these things could slightly vary, but it is universally accepted that the non-verbal communication plays a very, very important role in your communication. And we need to be very careful with this aspect as well. The next question is that, how do you prepare for this personality test round? The board expects the certain things from you and as you are also communicating through your emotional side of personality, so these are the qualities that you need to be very careful. The first thing is that uh, self-awareness. The many questions that board would ask you, they would try to understand that are you aware of your the range of emotions, the things that you feel, the things that you try to do, what your aspirations are or are you rooted in reality? Another aspect is self-regulation. In the certain situations, when the board poses you a question 
and the board uses many techniques. One of the techniques that is very popularly known as a trace interview technique, where the board could ask you a few questions which you may find a little uncomfortable. But how do you take care of a situation like that? How do you maintain your composer? And how do you handle those situations? Sometimes board could tell something unflattering as well. Something could say that could slightly upset you. And board are also watching that how do you maintain your composer. The third important aspect is motivation. In many situations, many questions and your past life experience as a student or as a professional, if you have worked somewhere, the board would like to see that how you have kept yourself motivated, how, do you, how you have solved problems. And if you come from a very privileged background where your DAF or your past experience does not show any kind of the stress or problem situation that you might have faced, then board could even give a hypothetical situation, a situational question where board could ask you that how would you handle it and how would you solve the problem. So the quality of the keeping yourself motivated under trying circumstances, that also becomes very important. Another important aspect is empathy. The many questions will also be asked, which try to understand your ability to empathize. Because unless you have got the ability to stand in someone else's shoe, understanding that what a person is going through, you cannot help that person. You cannot understand the problems of that person. So the ability of empathy is very important. And uh, this could be tested through many questions. One more aspect is your social skills. How you conduct yourself before the interview board. Good etiquettes that you follow. The way you say, sorry, thank you. The way you tackle questions. And uh, the way you, in a situation, for example, a difficult question that has been asked to you, and the way you respond to that, there could be, again, certain situational questions that will be testing your social skills. Board is also would be asking a few questions that will test your ethical aptitude. Suppose a question is being asked that relates to farmers committing suicide. And while answering such a question, the certain gravitas in your voice is required. If it is talking about poverty, crime against women, child trafficking, then your voice and your nonverbal cues that goes with that must display that you have got empathy, that you have got understanding of the gravity of that situation. But at the same time, if the body is asking about you about cricket, your hobbies, astrology, the nice uh, the ring that you were wearing and talking about that, then it's a kind of the roller coaster of the emotions where the light-hearted question and then you quickly readjust yourself and then you with a smile or with a certain kind of the cheerful enthusiasm you answer those questions. So your ethical attitude is also displayed when the gender, ethnic or environment related questions are being asked. Gender sensitivity is very important. So for example, if you have been asked a question that relates to problems that relate to women. And if you used any gender insensitive term, then unfortunately, that may not be a very good situation. Talking about environment, talking about the use of the plastic, and talking about the certain way you might have responded in an environmental situation, that will also be watched keenly by the board. And again, ethnic issues. For example, suppose you were talking about the tribal's problem. And if you're talking in a very patronizing manner, that is talking as if that those are the people whose lots are in your hand and you have to improve them, develop them, tell them what is right, then this ethnic insensitivity will also be marked. So we have to be very careful in these situations. During the interviews, the board has only one tool to test your personality, that is asking questions. 
but uh, it's very very difficult to bluff the board or try to create an impression try to put up a front and uh, try to make the lead the board up to the garden path because uh, you are pitted against the combined wisdom of the five very wise experienced professionals so the utmost honesty complete honesty is expected from you because that is the one way to impress the board and do well during the interviews when the board is asking questions and as i said that uh, the only tool they have got is asking the questions so the many questions that they ask uh, it may appear that they are only a ritual questions for example suppose the board asks you that why you want to become an ias don't you think the board board already knows that why you want to become an ias or if the board asks you that uh, you are an engineering graduate the government has spent a lot of money in your education on your education so why do you want to become a civil servant don't you think that a lot of money that the government has spent on you will go wasted the board already knows answer to such questions but when you are asked such questions they simply want to see that how you respond to that are you rational are you logical do you get unperturbed in a stress situation so when the board asks you that which party did you vote for the board really not very curious to know which party you voted for but the board simply wants to see that how do you handle a situation like this would you take dowry or many such questions you were simply taken aback but how do you respond to this these situations that becomes very very important now how do we tackle the personality test in such a manner that we do well many people think that personality means wearing nice clothes a good hair style good pair of shoes command of language and uh, well looking like a film star and uh, speaking in the baritone voice of the richard burton or amitabh bachchan but well that is not personality the interviews are the very simple situations where they are looking at suitability of a candidate for the civil services so naturally the aspects that they are looking at many students could try to put up a front and try to impress the board but board has to find the real personality of that candidate how did they do that well what is personality personality is something that is unique and relatively stable behavior thought and feelings of a person something that remains uh, almost unchanged throughout life although i know that some of you who have been nerding in psychology and doing phd on the personality theories in the areas uh, you must be the wondering that the many new things recent times have come up for example the northwestern university of illinois that has come up with the very very long study using 6000 people and uh, and it's talking about that how with the passage of the time with the aging the certain aspects of personality changes but for all practical purposes our personality practically almost remains unchanged so a mango tree remains a mango tree an apple tree remains an apple tree so it's very very important to be very honest before the interview board because if you are not honest the, the they are very experienced and they will know that what exactly you are trying to be what exactly you are trying to project to yourself so honesty is one of the the best attributes during the interviews how can we create a good impression on the board it's very important that you do a few things before you enter the interview hall take a few deep breaths because the level of the oxygen goes up and in your blood stream and uh, as you know that the 25% of the oxygen is used by your brain so taking deep breath at some open window slightly improve your cognitive ability and the second thing is that while you enter 
you take care of the, the knot of your ties, the shirt that you were uh, the, the wearing on, and uh, some other aspects like looking at the soon shoes knots and uh, your your jacket and uh, are you feeling a bit thirsty then you can take a few sips of water while entering take a deep breath and in a cheerful enthusiastic manner maintaining eye contact go up to the chair that's there that is meant for you but wait for them when they invite you to sit in the chair and while you are invited to sit in the chair, be quiet but alert to the opening moves of the board. The board in a very formal manner could ask you to sit in the chair or the board could simply gesture you to sit in the chair. While sitting in the chair, with a little bit of fuss, try to sit in the chair because mostly the chairs are put in such a manner that uh, you don't have to move it any further but if it is absolutely necessary then you can slightly adjust the chair sitting in the chair the most important aspect is that your sitting posture there are so many ways of sitting in the chair in the very informal situations or in the formal situations you might have seen hundreds of people sitting in the hundreds of different postures but here which is the best way to sit in the chair if you are leaning forward while sitting in the chair too much then it would mean uh, symbolize aggressive behavior or intruding into the space of the, the person whom you are speaking with. And if you are leaning back in the chair, then that denotes that the, either the boredom or authority or the many such things that you are trying to convey. If you are sitting ramrod erect in the chair, then looks very stiff and extremely formal. Best way to sit in the chair, for example, some candidates sit on the edge of the chair that also looks like lacking in assertiveness and confidence. Best way to sit in the chair is that try to occupy the maximum space that your body can comfortably sit in the chair. Sit erect, your shoulders should be square and uh, slightly lean forward. That is the deviation of 10 to 15 degrees and while sitting try to make eye contact with the, all the members in a sweep look at all the members. So the sitting is taken care of. Another important aspect is that what to do with your hands. Try to keep your hands comfortably in your laps because when you put your hands in your lap then you not only you feel comfortable but at the same time it's easier for you to concentrate during the interview boards because while a question is being asked and if you are making exaggerated hand movements, then sometimes it looks aggressive, sometimes it looks unbecoming of a, the candidate who is appearing in a very, very formal interview. And besides looking professorial, it also looks like that uh, the entire process of the interview you have not taken very seriously and you don't even understand the kind of the respect that you need to give to your interviewers. So keeping your hands still either in your laps or you can put your hands on the, on the arms of the chair as well. Another important aspect is your eye contact. Eye contact is a very, very important aspect because Maintaining an eye contact would convey alertness, confidence, involvement and also the level of energy that you are communicating. Sometimes many students break the eye contact and start looking at the ceiling or the sideways. Avoid that. So one of the members would engage most probably the chairperson would start asking you a question. If you are, you are being asked a question, maintain the eye contact with the member who is asking you a question. But in a sweep, look at other members as well. And one more thing, try to avoid eyeball to eyeball eye contact. Because in a eyeball to eyeball eye contact, sometimes again it becomes slightly intimidating kind of the look it starts giving. So the best technique is that the triangle that is built on your face till the neck area and that is the soft eye contact that you maintain that person and then answer the 
questions. It's, it's very important that when you are being asked a question and another member asks you a question, you quickly you have to the, the change and stop and start answering to the other member's question, then maintain eye contact with that person. About 15 to 20 minutes, uh, in a few sweeps, you have to look at other members, but mostly we have to maintain eye contact with the person who is asking you. One more thing, under no circumstances, take your hands to your face or touch your face. Do you remember we talked about the US presidential debates? If you look at the debates and the, it could last for several hours, but you will notice not even for a split second, a candidate will take his or her hand to the face. Do you know why? The simple reason is that touching your hands or the face sometimes give the idea that either you are lying or you are not sure of yourself. Although body language is understood in the context that it is being. So the many things could mean different thing in different places. For example, in Great Britain, if the people tap their nose and that would mean that maintain confidentiality. So you will notice that the how things could be different. But in general, taking your hands to your face, touching your nose, face or the eyes would mean lacking in concept, not sure or you are being slightly deceptive or not telling the truth. There could be some physiological reason as well. For example, there could be some itching you might be feeling in your nose on your face and you could take your hands there. But the problem is that you wouldn't have opportunity to tell the board this is the reason why I took my hands to my face. So practice sitting at least half an hour without touching your face. That becomes very, very important. Another important aspect is that not crossing your hands at all. Because again, that will show either defensiveness or authority. Because if you have not practiced, then the chances are that during the interview, suddenly you forget for a second and suddenly you cross your hands before your chest. That also needs to be avoided. So sitting posture, your hands, your eyes, and the next important thing is your voice. Earlier we talked about that uh, your entire interview will be a kind of the emotional roller coaster. So there would be chances that the, when the board could be asking you lighthearted questions, and those are the times where you could smile or even you can laugh a bit. Well, there is a practical rule is that if the board is laughing, you smile, and the board is a smile, you look cheerful. But don't do it other way around. The board is smiling and you are burst into laughter. It could be counterproductive. So, and when, some of the serious questions or the questions which have got the, the sensitive elements, then you need to maintain the gravity in your voice. The empathy, the feel should be there in your voice as well. And one more thing, your voice should not be too loud or too low. Is it possible that we can modulate our voice? Look, if you have not practiced or if you have not taken care of this problem, then the chances are that you may not find it very easy during the interviews. There is a simple way to practice it. Ask a friend and um, put a chair across the table six to eight feet away and try various volumes of your voice and the different pitch and ask your friend that are you comfortably audible? And uh, if you get the feedback, yes, you are comfortably audible, neither very low or not very high, then that is the volume that you try to speak. How can you do that? Before the interview for a few weeks, try to speak uh, on that volume because slowly it will become much easier for you to adopt. And then it will be before the interview board, you won't find that suddenly your voice, the pitch or the volume is falling or the going up. Another important aspect is that the maintaining erect posture before the interview board. How can we practice that? If you think that uh, with a bit of slouching happens the moment after a few minutes when you are sitting in the chair and it's very difficult to become conscious if you are trying to maintain an erect posture, then again, you can do the same thing. Take a simple dining chair and uh, try to sit in the chair for half an hour at least, watch the television or speak to someone, but the maintaining the sitting posture where you are sitting erect, shoulders are square, and you are looking 
up to the level of the where your interviewers would be sitting and speaking to your friends or your people, whoever is around. So this kind of practice is very, very important. One more aspect is the language that you are using. It's a very formal interview. Everything is formal. The dress, the language, etiquettes, your nonverbal cues. So use of language would also be formal. It so happens that uh, with our friends in canteen, in the cafes, most of the time we are using informal language. And I don't have to give you a list of such words. For example, using the word ya yeah, or many Americanism because you are watching a lot of Hollywood movies or the serials and you pick up the many phrases and the expressions. But uh, here, try to avoid uh, such informal language and the formal words, formal phrases is very, very important. Another aspect is that when you are answering a question and the board has asked you a difficult question and suddenly you are not sure that how to answer that question and suddenly a member gives you a cue, gives you some hint and that helps you answer that question. So before proceeding to that question, it's very important that you first thank that member. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. And then you proceed with that. In the same manner, if you made uh, any faux pas, that means if you made any faux pas and you noticed, then you must apologize very quickly. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, madam. I used an inappropriate expression. I'm sorry, madam. I'm sorry, sir. It was very insensitive to say that. I'm, I'm really sorry. So always show that it's okay to make a mistake, but always show that you are aware of that. And the one big issue during interviews, many, many candidates have told me is that whenever a member is asking the question, unfortunately, the previous questions or the previous moment certain questions, I was not able to answer. And that is hovering in my mind. And I'm extremely bothered that probably I have messed up my interview. It's very, very important that you live in the present. If you think that you couldn't answer a question very well previously, a few minutes back, then quickly forget that because every moment is a new opportunity. And any time, at any moment, you can shine in your interviews. So it's the train of thought that is going through your mind that needs to be controlled. And uh, there is a beautiful technique. Uh, I, I, I like to call it uh, Imelda Marcos theory because you know the Imelda Marcos. <laughs> The, the former president of Philippines. Uh, I don't mean any malice, but then uh, she was very famously reported to have thousands of pairs of shoes. So think of the various shoe boxes and before entering the interview hall, if you have got any financial problem, health problem, relationship problems, anything that could be, imagine a shoe box, put those problems in that shoe box and close it. And forget everything. When you enter the interview hall, the only thing that matters is your performance there. So your train of thought, that could include your personal problem. Your train of thought, that could include something that might have transpired a few minutes back during the interviews. That should not bother you. As I told you that every moment is a new opportunity. Every time you answer a question, it's also very important to take a pause of one or two seconds and then start answering. Why should we do that? Because taking a pause, the first thing is that you are able to understand the questions very well. The second thing is that if you take a pause, actually you are giving a lot of respect to the board because the board thinks that uh, you find this question very respectable and you're thinking about it, that how to answer it. Because if you jump to answer a question, then the board would think, aha, you were trying to display that, look how, what a simple question you have asked. And then you try to answer it in a jiffy. So don't rush to answer. Take a pause. And second important aspect is that your voice would sound deep and confident. Take deep breath. You might have seen that the many good public speakers, 
before they speak, they take deep breath, but it should not be very obvious. While you are taking breath, it should not make any sounds, it should not look so obvious that what you are doing and then start speaking. And the one last important skill before the interview board is that you are listening because your train of thought could make you sometimes spacing out. You understand what is the spacing out? You are before the interview board, but suddenly you are thinking of something else. Unfortunately, in those circumstances, you would not be able to hear what the board has asked you. And those are the situations where the many candidates would say, I beg your pardon, sir. I beg your pardon, madam. And then you request the board to, to repeat the question. Try to avoid such situations. So spacing out needs to be avoided. You should also try to avoid word listening. That is, you are literally focusing to the words and the way the words are being spoken and sometimes you miss that what exactly the board is trying to convey you. So, while listening a question, listen with the eyes, heart and emotions behind that. Only then you will exactly understand the word, what board is asking you and then it will be easier for you to answer. And as for the dress, what you wear, many people also fuss over it. Well, in many ways, it is a very simple interview. That is, uh, you don't have to wear very expensive clothes or very fancy clothes. What is important that we wear something that is neat, formal, mostly for the male candidates is the dark trousers and the light colored shirt. And... Uh, if the, the weather is uh, cool enough, then you can also wear a jacket. The color of your tie, it should be the pastel color or it should be plain or printed or striped, but avoid very fancy looking or very shiny looking ties. Shoes should be well polished and ensure that it's a formal pair of shoes. Again, the shoes should not be designer shoes, very pointed or very shiny ones. For young ladies, again, Although I am afraid uh, that uh, I might be making some uh, the value judgments, but then I think it will be a good idea to either wear a sari or a salwar suit. Although business suit or pants suit, uh, such dresses are not forbidden, but maybe I am not quite uh, sure that why I am emphasizing, but a sari or a salwar suit probably this will be a good idea. Hair style, whichever hair style you wear, it's absolutely okay. The one thing that you need to ensure that uh, your hair should not be all over your face when you are talking or shaking your hand. So maybe a good bun that you tie on your head, that, that could be such a good idea. Or you pin your hair in such a manner that it's not all over your face. The same thing applies to the jewelry, the, the rings that you wear, again, there are the, no such rules, but if you are wearing certain rings or jewelry, it could attract the attention of the board. A candidate who was wearing two or three rings with the semi-precious stones and the board asked him, do you believe in astrology? Because chances are that the such things could invite such questions. And uh, then the sometimes uh, the discussions veer around uh, is astrology a science or it's not a science and then such kind of debates you can never win. Try to avoid that. So if you could take off your rings and put in your pocket and if it's giving the same kind of effect for which you are wearing, then that will be a good idea. But it's absolutely your choice. And the, I cannot say much about that. But it's very important that your language your dress, your etiquettes should be formal and you should make the board feel important. Never interrupt the board whenever they are asking questions or they are making any, content, any comment. Never interrupt them. So these are the things that you need to take care of and with a bit of practice. Although, as I said, that the personality is relatively stable, it cannot be changed, but some way that you express yourself 
can be something that you are trying to convey on the way you are presenting yourself that uh, could be presented in a very impressive manner. So these are the things possibly will certainly help you cheerful enthusiasm, good etiquette, honesty, humility will certainly win the day for you. And the last and most important thing is that when your interview is concluded. During the interview, one more thing happens. Sometimes you become a bit uncomfortable or nervous. That is the time when sometimes, sometimes the board offers you tissues or sometimes the board offers you a glass of water. And uh, sometimes the, the the board members they themselves are taking the cookies or the coffee and they could offer you. If they offer you cookies or the coffee, always politely say, no, thank you. No, thank you, sir. No, thank you, madam. But if the board insists, then you must take it. But when you, for example, if you take a cup of coffee, take only a few sips. Don't try to finish the cup. If you have been offered a cookie, always say, no, thank you, sir. But if they insist, then you should break the cookies with your hand, put one piece in your mouth. Because if you take the entire piece of the cookie in your mouth and try to bite it, sometimes it breaks into the so many pieces and it's all over you. So that is how you do that. This is such a small things, but that is very, very important. And sometimes you are feeling very uncomfortable. They're offering you water. Always take it with a thank you. Take a few gulps very carefully and don't spill the water. But Another important thing is that as I told you that before entering the interview hall, always carry a small bottle of water yourself and take a few sips because the chances are that under the slightly stressful situation, you may feel a bit dehydrated. So many situations the candidate themselves have asked for water. Can you have some water? Try to avoid that situation. Drink a few sips of the water before you enter in the hall. Tissue, sometimes some candidates gets emotional, board offers it, always take with the grace, use it, fold it, but do not use tissue put on the, the table of the interviewers. Keep it in your hand. When your interview is over, and that is a moment, sometimes very rarely, if the board asks you that, do you want to ask any questions, always say, no, thank you, sir. But remember, the last moments of your interview should you should always be smiling because they are always lighthearted moments. So smile, gently get up and take a bow. Say thank you and look, come out of your chair and you turn around and you don't have to turn back again and you take a bow. No, you don't do all those things. Simply go and push the door and go out. So I'm repeating. You get up, slightly take a bow, say them, thank you, sir, thank you, madam, and then go back. Don't try to readjust the chair and in creating any kind of the fuss. This is the very, very important aspect because taking a graceful bow is also the part of the interview etiquettes. Good luck. Thank you.